Welcome to How to Improve Your Podcast, yes. the episode where we talk about improving your podcast. I'm Cody. You've already heard enough from me. This is the one I'm you want to hear from. Yes. Uh, that's it? Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Yes, we co-host Cryptids Across the Atlas, and we both own Reckless Media. And a corndog stand, now that everybody yes, in the room knows. So, <laughs> Guys, we are very interactive people. Please, once again, ask questions like, let's just kind of roll this thing through. We're, we'll let it go where it goes. We have an outline. Um, Elaine is very PowerPoint driven. As you guys already know, I just like to talk. So, uh, talking about improving your podcast. There are a few, you do this thing. Here, you start this thing and I'll fill in. Okay. I've talked enough today and I got another yes. one of these. Okay, so we talked about. Yeah, keep going. Yes, okay. So improve your podcast by improving your quality. So we want to get from just publishing an episode to polishing our show. And there are a lot of different ways that you can improve your podcast. And we're going to go over four main categories. The four main categories are audio and video, copy and SEO, confidence and conversation and call to action and strategy. So a little bit about our production. Cody is the brains behind the audio and video and I handle all of the copy. We both script write the uh, our episodes for the podcast. So we both do that, but all of the editing is him and then I handle um, social media. Yes. I can do a little bit of video and a little bit of audio, but mostly that is his specialty. And so actually my background is in writing. So I've been blogging since 2011 and podcast, like, again, like the audio, that is not me. I've done a little bit of audio. I used to have my own solo podcast. I had several episodes that I did by myself. I did one interview, never again. I did not like the editing process. Um, so I just like forever, I was like, he's gonna handle that, not me. I'm gonna um, talk a little bit about that as well for improving, because yes. there is some of that to this as well mm -hmm. go ahead so yeah my background is in, it's not in audio it is in blogging and writing and um which i focus on so our clients we do a lot of podcasts and marketing and so i handle like the blogs and the scripts for their stuff and the outlines and their show notes and the descriptions and really like hyping up the guest and whatever the topic is a lot of our podcasts that we edit is in the mental health recovery space. So really talking about the guests and really hyping up what they bring to the conversation. Yeah, so just as a heads up, I know we're the weirdos up here that talk about the stuff that hides in the woods, but we also do have a professional side to yes. us as well. So I promise you can probably relate to us, and if you can't, then just, you know, we're the weirdos up here, it's fine. Yes. But carry on. Okay, so how to improve your audio and video. Why does this matter? Read your PowerPoint and then I'll okay, ramble. Okay, so the PowerPoint. <laughs> So clear audio is crucial for audience retention. Engaging video is crucial for discoverability and engagement. So a quick rundown of what I know how to improve audio Go and video. It. Yes. So invest in obviously a high quality microphone, camera, lighting, uh, creating dedicated space for recording. Um, you're already recording, so why not capture the video? We've talked a lot about that within the previous workshops and the speaking. I'm about to talk yeah, about Cody's that. about to talk about that. But yeah, you're already setting a time, uh, setting aside time to record, so why not add the video element to it? And even if you are like, I don't want to handle video, it's just good practice just to get in front of the camera. And then learn editing tools like Logic Pro for audio, Final Cut Pro for video, or outside the outsource this if your budget allows. Okay, so let's just talk for a minute about video. Uh, our show, you saw a little bit of it playing there at the beginning. We are a podcast that behaves like a YouTube channel. Uh, we are a YouTube channel. I would say we have around 600 to 700, uh, or we have 2,000 subscribers on Spotify, uh, around 80,000 downloads on Spotify, um, four or 500 active tune in every week. Uh, on YouTube, we have over 4,000 subscribers. So you can see it's double what it is on that. On Instagram, we have over 60,000 subscribers. On TikTok, we have over 40 or 50,000 yes. subscribers. So it tears out. The reason I say that video is a very important, I'm not telling you you have to do video. If audio already sounds overwhelming, that's fine. Just take a step back, just tune out what I'm about to say. If you wanna take your podcast to the next level, get behind a camera. Even if you're not intending to publish the video, get behind a camera. 
The reason I'm telling you this is because I don't stand up here and talk to you confident about sitting in front of a crowd. I'm much more comfortable right here than I am sitting out there and mingling with you. You'll probably notice I'm really awkward out there, but up here I seem really comfortable. I'm also really introverted. It's a weird thing about introverts. If you are one, you get it. Being in front of a crowd is not near as scary as being in a crowd. I don't know why. But uh, get in front of video so you can watch yourself. So you can see how you handle yourself. So you can see how many times you're gonna pick at your nose and adjust your mustache and you have a mustache. You, Play with some your of hair. you don't, obviously. <laughs> uh, you know, get an idea for how you hold yourself because that is going to help you become a more confident speaker. When you see yourself on video, you are able to understand. There's this weird thing, uh, a lot of, we've done a few polls that are extremely, uh, you know, like efficient and professional where we've interviewed like some random youth kids about how they <laughs> listen to podcasts. I used to be a youth pastor and I was a worship pastor. So yeah, you know, same thing. I used to ask them like, how do you listen to podcasts? Because I was doing church podcast production at the time primarily and nonprofit work. And I was like, how do you guys listen to podcasts? Well, I don't know, we just watch people talk on YouTube. I was like, are you kidding me? That sounds so, but I'm way too busy to freaking watch people sit there and do this like we're all actually doing right, right now. Uh, circle. <laughs> yeah. But especially like, no, I'm like, I'm at the gym, I'm driving. I don't need to be watching my phone any more than I already do when I'm driving. Like that's dangerous. Like stop. Uh, but they, they literally, they'll just put it on like a, like a buddy in the room. I don't get it. Like I, you know, I'm on the cusp, right? I was born in 93. So I'm on the cusp of like the whole tech world, right? Like I grew up with dial up internet and like, I wasn't on it very much because my aunt called a whole lot. And so like, I didn't grow up with that constant companion. You know, I lived a little out of town. We didn't get high speed internet until I was a teenager. And so I loved media. I loved producing video, like with my old Sony Handycam, you know, tape deck camcorder and stuff. But I wasn't familiar with just having it on in the room. But there is something about video that connects with people. You do not have to be a video centric podcast like we are. We are video centric. Everything we do, I have a photo come up on the screen every 30 seconds minimum. It is my goal. Very rarely will you ever see that variate because I am very versed in TikTok marketing and attention mm -hmm. spans have gone. You have to keep them engaged. That said, luckily, a lot of that is starting to flip now that we're coming out of that pandemic mindset a lot of that is turning away. So we are able, people are starting to want to engage with authentic conversations and not just be entertained. That's good. Now we're an entertainment based podcast. We're going to talk about like, do you have your whole three things that you need to do in a podcast bit on this? No, but I can go over go that. For, do it. Yeah. So any, anytime you're creating content, podcast, blog, whatever it is that you are creating, you want to have it either be entertaining, empowering or educating. And if you do it well, you can do all three of them. And that's what we strive to do with Cryptids Across the Atlas is we're entertainment because it's fun to talk about things that may or may, may not exist. We do the education piece because we educate about the culture and the history and why we believe in these things and how this belief impacts our society and culture. And then empowering, like you feel empowered after learning about whether it's your own hometown or a place you've always wanted to visit, like you can go into that place or that mindset or know about that thing and feel empowered that you have um, that education piece and that you can kind of connect with those people because you may have your own experiences. Uh, yeah, so video is very important. I can keep talking about that. I'm gonna talk about social media in a minute. Does anyone have any questions about video and podcasting what I've just talked about? Yeah, so like, this is just for our podcast, which other people in this room who have, might have a similar set that we do. Uh, we are three co-hosts scattered across three different cities. We do our podcast entirely remotely. So mm -hmm. we're all filming in our own home offices or whatever. Um, we are in the process of trying to raise our uh, visual game as well. Sure. But because it's unscripted, mm -hmm. it's you know a little more long form and we're all in different rooms. Uh, do you have any tips or anything for like, um, other than like the technical side, of like what camera to get mask and that necessarily, yeah. but like how to improve just like like, how do I, how can I edit quickly and make sure, make sure that it looks good, but then like, do we need to have all of us on screen all the time, or do we need to set it to where it only shows who's speaking? I like, do you have any tips on that? Like, as far as engagement goes, like, what do people like the most when they're watching that? Um, so some people like split screen. Uh, 
some cut in between. You can get caught up in the weeds really quick on editing all that, and it can take a lot of time, especially if you have a two hour episode like so you're talking about. Trying to avoid all that. Uh, you <laughs> use Premiere Pro, right? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I have a little bit of memory left in me. Um, <laughs> have you heard of Autopod? No. Autopod is an AI tool that you feed all three forms of video into. It automatically cuts dead air and aligns to whoever's talking automatically, so you get your full 1080p resolution cuts between them automatically. Uh, it's a fantastic tool that shaves hours off of workflow. Then you can manually cut in where you want the, the three piece video of like the three of you talking. Um, I think that's gonna be your quickest time saver, is gonna be Autopod. Uh, it's Premiere only, sadly. Um, I wish they had it for Final Cut, even though Final Cut has some stuff with like clips and it's just not the same. Um, but if you do have, that's, that's my recommendation to that. Uh, people like dynamic movement, so if like someone's nodding their head, it's good sometimes to cut over to someone like to see reactions from people, not just like talking head for 10 minutes while, like especially you're doing, like I'm sure there's a lot of dynamic between the three of you, yeah. so cutting between that dynamic is good. Uh, the other thing I would highly recommend is using some kind of switchboard, uh, like an, uh, does anyone know what a Elgato is by chance? Like, yeah, so it's just literally like this thing with a bunch of little buttons on it, you program it to do you want. You can just hit which one you wanna switch between, so as you're listening live, you're like one, two, three. There's a very similar one over there if you wanna go look at it two doors down uh, at the podcast studio. It has literally button one, two, three. You can switch between all the cameras. I'm sure Ty will let you press the buttons. Uh, it works really well. It works digitally. It works in person, however you want to do it. But, yeah, that's, I think he uses stream. I don't know, he uses black magic, which is like black magic to me. I don't know. So <clears throat> that was pretty good, right? That, no. Uh, okay. And that's like basically almost live editing. Yeah, you can edit it live. Um, you've probably edited it long enough, you get it. I edit it 100, 100 times speed, so it's double, you know, two, 2.5 times speed is my editing. So, like, you get pretty quick with it, and you can edit an uh, hour-long podcast. And especially if you use Autopod to kind of do the initials, you could probably edit that hour and a half in about an hour. So. And I will say for um, our clients for short form video, turning their podcast into short form video for social media, a lot of times they'll have like um, the host talking about a subject and to keep the engagement, we have like, um, what's it, B-roll. Yeah, we'll just pull B-roll from like Envato Elements yeah. or uh, Pixabay or something mm -hmm. like that, just to kind of like add in those elements to kind of help tell the story, yeah. even though it's just a podcast. I assume you all talk about short form later. Yes. I'll talk about anything and everything yes. anyone wants to talk about. <laughs> I'm gonna hit, oh, I don't think you have the presentation. No, let, me, let me go ahead and preface this. I'm, I say a lot of things that are probably really technical to some people. If anyone needs me to back up, you're welcome to say, hey, what does that mean? Just yell it out. Hey, what does that mean? And I'm happy to elaborate more I on it. I do this all the time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, I get on rants. Also, um, our next segment is with Ty, and it's just us two as well. So it's all going to kind of bleed together. So if monetization stuff comes up, Ty is welcome to kind of come in. We'll just kind of mix this thing together because there's a lot about improving we can go over. Uh, anything else about video specific with just the podcasting side of it? Move on. Okay. So why copy and SEO matter? Well-written copy attracts the right listeners and builds credibility. SEO boosts your reach. Think Google, YouTube, social media, all of that. So your audio tells the story. Your copy sells the story. So it's crafting the story behind the message, the topic, the guest, whatever you are trying to push out with your podcast. So um, you want to utilize description. So this is really what I focus on with show notes. Really hyping up like if, if it's an interview podcast really hyping up the guests sharing their story why does this matter why does the listener care that this person is being interviewed why does their story matter how is it going to relate to that person and then making sure that you put their links so if they have social if they have their own podcast whatever it is that they're wanting to promote yes. keep going yeah i'm going to share uh, some stuff uh, be sure to include those descriptions and this helps not just uh, repurposing content because you can turn that into like Facebook statuses or LinkedIn posts or, you know, even turning the audio, like using tools like Descript where you literally just pull the script from the uh, podcast and then repurposing that for copy. Um, also a huge thing is utilizing tags. And I'm not just talking about hashtags on social. I'm talking about metadata and putting tags in the, like if you have um, your audio, like, I'm showing it live yeah. right now. Naming the audio what the topic is and making sure you have your keyword, like you know what your keyword is and putting that in your metadata because <laughs> if, especially on like Google and YouTube, YouTube will read those tags. So let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. 
A lot of times on podcasting, we like to be creative with our titles because we don't always want to give away the whole thing, right? Some interviews are like, hey, this is my conversation with so-and-so about this. You know, it's, you know, this is Bob. He really likes Oreos. That's what we're talking about. Like, or with us, sometimes you want to be a little more creative. Cryptic, Cryptic yes. for our, yes. yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, you don't want to give it all away, right? Because there's a lot to it and it's the mystery. It's, it's clickbait. I, it's it's what it is. We have to get people's attention. If you don't get people's attention, you're not going to get their attention. So and as long as it's honest, it works. Right, honest is good. Yes, ethics, ethics. Yes. Be honest. <laughs> uh, so if you notice, all this is. Can everyone see that? Okay. Can we kind of sorta? There we Whoa. go. Yeah. So hey, these are. That? Huh? How did you zoom in and find her? Some different thing. Uh, hold command, hit plus and minus. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm at school right now. <laughs> it's such a great tool because I'm getting my eyesight's getting worse now the that same, I'm 31. Yeah. It's always so small. Yep. So if you'll notice, uh, these are all the, just the different assets. These are all different short form videos. All there's like our actual outline. I'll go into anything and everything you want to see. I do not care. Uh, these are our thumbnails. We do unique thumbnails for everything. There's the square version. It's the thumbnail version for the YouTube video put over the same background every time because I'm not making a square version for every episode. So the reason I'm showing you this is because if you notice, and this is going to be really hard to see and I can't zoom in on this, the name of this episode, okay, on YouTube, uh, escape. <coughs> that didn't work. Go back. The name of this episode on YouTube is... What? Is <laughs> Swamp Beast stalks Florida family caught on camera and then skunk ape. Okay, that's the story. That's what it literally did. It supposedly stalked this Florida family. If you notice, our metadata is Florida skunk ape sightings and evidence. No one's ever going to see that except for Google or YouTube or your podcast. Uh, wherever you upload. When we upload to Spotify for podcasters, it says, what file do you want to use? And you drag the file over. We're not dragging over, uh, episode you know. Episode 206. Yeah, episode 206 dash recorded in September. Because that doesn't tell anybody, or it doesn't tell Google. Google what your podcast is about. So when I drag this over, I am telling it right off the bat. What is this about? Florida skunk ape sightings and evidence. Why is it about that? Because people aren't searching, did the skunk ape stalk people in Florida? No, they're asking, they wanna see sightings or evidence. So that's the whole title. You go into Meta, there's a whole little description here, which it's making it really small on my screen too. When hundreds of Florida residents reported a large hairy beast, it's literally that first little snippet is in the description in the metadata because all these podcast players read that. You wanna improve your podcast, you wanna improve your reach, Put it in the title because no one's ever going to see that and it's a way to get even more SEO keywords stuffed into an episode and it's going to get it ranked higher in places. Is it, I'm sorry. Nope. Don't let me tell me this. Uh, when you're putting like a, a description in the comments on the metadata like that, yes. do you have any numbers or any quantitative data on how much of a difference that actually makes in SEO? I'm, uh, just, I'm, I'm just curious what the... Yeah. Um, give me a second. I'll pull it up. Because that's something I've never even, I didn't even know you could do that or that it would make a difference. Uh, also, YouTube tags and thumbnail data and stuff. So we changed it a little bit of that around on one episode just to test it. Uh, just a minute ago. Let me pull up my dashboard. Um, Elaine, keep talking. i got to find something. Yes, yeah, so descriptions. You want to sell the story, again, with um, stalking family. So, like I said, that was honest because that is supposedly what happened but it's descriptive enough to explain what happens but it also is very engaging people want to know like oh like this family was stalked like i want to see that like it seems sensationalist but that's kind of what cryptids are like they may or may not exist and so there's a little bit of freedom you can kind of use with like clickbait titles um but once again you have your ethics you have your honesty um and being transparent about what you're doing you're not trying to fake anything you're not trying to pretend you're one thing and you're not you're not trying to say hey like you know it's about you know ha have it talk about one thing and then you never actually talk about that topic like you want to be honest about it but you want if your purpose is to entertain people you really need to make it engaging i'm trying to zoom in on this so this was our initial push Okay, where is this at since published? Let me go last. So our initial push, this is all our initial followers. 
right here on this date is whenever we changed everything. This whole new uptick was after we already plateaued, just from changing the thumbnail that had the proper metadata in it. Um, it hasn't worked every single time. And this is something that we started doing just a couple months ago. Yeah, this is all very new to yes. us too. Because uh, it takes time. It takes time to try to get all this stuff in and there, I will but it say, does help. Like typically for any major changes, like Google says, like give it 90 days. So like publishing anything or making changes um, to like even ads and stuff, like give it about 90 days and then you can actually have more accurate data on if it's working, if it doesn't matter. Uh, let's talk about SEO. Does anyone want to talk about that? I know no one wants to talk about that, but you want to talk about that. Does anyone know what SEO is not? Is anyone like, what's that mean? A muffin. Okay, search, what? It's not a muffin. No, it's not a muffin. <laughs> uh, search engine optimization. So everything you do in life revolves around search engines. Um, if you go to a podcast player, like, oh, I don't know, Apple Podcasts, this is a search engine. Google is a search engine. Bing is a search engine. Spotify is a search engine. So when you go to a search engine and you type in something, you want to show up for it, right? There's us in the top, you know, whatever group of shows here. Why do we show up there? Because our main keyword that we're trying to rank for is cryptid. What is our name? Cryptids across the atlas. If you're trying to make a show about Oreos, I don't know why I'm on I Oreos. <laughs> you're not gonna name it Ding Dogs Are Us or like Twinkie. You're gonna name it I Like Oreos or Oreos Are My Favorite Cookie, the podcast, because they're not either. I don't know. Anyway, so. <laughs> it's just an example. <laughs> uh, <laughs> keywords are important. The name of your show is important. The name of your episodes are important. I will show another example. Uh, has anyone ever heard of the Chattawa Monster? Probably not, that's fine. You, none of us are from Mississippi around here. Uh, well, have you ever heard of the Chattawa Monster? <laughs> okay. I in Mississippi. Nice. Great. If you Google Chattawa Monster, we are the, f what, third to our website because we're putting every episode on our website. What is the name of this cryptidsacrossthealthless.com forward slash Chattawa Monster history behind Mississippi's Circus man ape. That's all the keywords you're ever gonna need to search for something that no one's even looking up in the first place. So, <laughs> But you wanna make it as descriptive as possible. Here's all of our text. There it is again, that same title. Here's our video. Here's where you can find us and listen. You wanna read the whole script? There it is, the whole script right there on our website. Here's another big one, resources. Our entire book of research that we do, we backlink every one of them. Why do we backlink? Is it because we're trying to give original credit to the author and we're good ethical people? Yeah, it is, but it's also because we get an SEO boost by backlinking them. Because the more you can link other people's work in your work, the more Google says, this is a legitimate thing. Look at all their sources. I know it's complicated, but it's just ways to boost things. You can do the same thing in show notes, which we do. We don't do those, we do the uh, chapter markers in show notes. Mm -hmm. Same thing, chapter markers, great thing. Put chapters, go for it. Very far back. No, go for it, whoever wants to go over there. I can keep talking, sorry, just keep going. Yeah, uh, okay, two quick questions. I'm glad you show notes because I'm always tempted to like, take some back to my website, mm -hmm. to keep like, everything in show notes, so you say, learn more, go to your website. I, uh, so this is our show notes right here. These are our actual show notes. It has that same little bio that you saw that was in that meta description. We just use the same one. There's no reason to try to write a bunch of different things for that little description. Here's all of our chapter markers. I use a, a tool that I just flag them as I go. You can use an AI tool to, to do your chapter markers. Uh, and then we have links to our website. Here's our cryptid map. If you go there, you can see an interrupted, it goes to this right here, where it's just an interactive map of every episode we've done that's just got cryptid like pins and you can click on them and find our episodes and stuff. Uh, so if you want, where was that at? Where was I? Yeah. Uh, podcast links. You can go, we're already on YouTube, so there's not, not really a reason to you. If, depending on where you're at, that links to different things, right? Spotify, Apple, we do those links. We have our social links. 
Um, we have who researched it. We have who did the music, which is me. I wrote the music for everything you hear on this show. Uh, I don't use AI for that because obviously I'm a biased person because I do music. I will say uh, it depends on what links you want. And we'll, we also have a section on a call to action and where you want to lead your listeners. Um, but it does depend on what exactly you want them to go to. So, so some of our clients just have like, go to our website and it's like a link tree and it like it's literally just one link that they put in their show notes and then that has like all the different pages um or you can do it um with all your social links however like wherever you want people to go to i don't necessarily know if there's a specific strategy behind that because i've done two different things and i haven't seen a huge difference in more or less just lead people where you want them to go there is no shame on leading them back to your website uh i would i would encourage you to lead them back to your website ultimately Um, YouTube does not get onto you as much about that. Most search engines are very particular about keeping them on, or most socials are particular about keeping you on their network. YouTube is not a social media network, it is a search engine. There is a difference. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, TikTok, search engines, Pinterest, YouTube, Google, Bing, places like that. And I will say- Search engines wanna keep you uh, happy. Social want to keep you there. I will say a couple of years ago, I don't know. I've just kind of followed this like literally since we've been doing podcasting. But a couple of years ago, um, there was an issue. I believe it was Spotify, but I can't remember exactly which platform. But um, making sure you have the full tailed uh, link for like if it's facebook.com slash your username, instead of saying like Facebook and hyperlinking it, there was an issue where it wouldn't link on everything. So it's better to have like your full link. Yeah, so I have full looked, links on yeah, everything. If you I notice. haven't changed, like done anything different since we've started doing podcasting because I know it was an issue a couple of years ago, but I haven't come back to that. Yeah, does anyone use short linking on anything? You know what I'm talking about like Bitly or stuff like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't, okay. <laughs> Um, quick question for the people that may overwhelm. What is the position title of the person that you hired to do this? Uh, which one? <laughs> uh, really, I mean, I mean from. Uh, the okay, so you have a few different people you would hire in this. Some people you would just maybe hire like a freelance digital creative, okay, or like someone who's looking at media production internships. Uh, some would be video production. Um, that would be like some of the YouTube style stuff. Would be like content creator or like content creation editor, or like content editor. Uh, You would have um, audio, what would I guess be like, uh, what do I call myself? I'm an audio engineer, Engineer, I guess. I don't know, I hate titles. Um, Audio engineer would be like a professional term that like, am I saying that? Is that a professional, do people still use that term? Anyway, yeah, yeah, audio engineer. uh, You may do uh, social media manager, Mm -hmm. okay? Like these are all titles. Um, These are all aspects, some freelance agencies do that. Uh, you know, for people with big enough budgets, we handle that for them. Um, people starting out, a lot of this stuff they're kind of having to take on themselves. Uh, you want to get into social media, like people who are unfamiliar with social media, ask a, 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 a nephew or a, a niece or, a, you know, someone like that. That's a good, people like us, like ask questions and learn. And a lot of this we can kind of take on our own and figure out what your audience wants. We're going to give a lot of information. You don't need all of it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, our goal is to become a TV show. Our goal is not to become like to stay small. That's just our goal because it's fun, because we're trying to do it. If it becomes boring and we hate it, we're just gonna scrap it and do something else. I will say also leaning into your strengths. So audio engineering is not my strength. Writing is my strength. So I love writing the scripts and recording the podcast like you saw in the video. But I, if it were just me doing this, I would hire an audio person because that is not something, I've done a little bit of it and I don't wanna touch it. I don't enjoy it. It stresses me out, but there's I like a, it. I get to sit in my office well, alone. Well, and there, and there are coffee. some people who don't like the copy aspect, so they don't even use any of it. Yes. Okay, so what if I want to do show notes and chapter markers, but I don't like AI? Oh, yeah, fair. Um, so, being that you're a podcast editor, uh, there are tools you can. So, I edit everything in Final Cut, okay? Final Cut is a is a, uh, there's a fancy name for it, like an abbreviated name. It basically, it's an editor for video. I use Logic Pro for audio. Some people may use Audacity. Some people may use Descript because they like to just be able to delete words live, right? Descript, you can actually look at the script and just backspace out the words you don't want in and it cuts the audio for you. So if like that's more your thing, everyone, Descript. It's 
relatively decent at what it does. It's the best one on the market for that style of editing. If you like are used to looking at written word more than you are audio editing. Uh, it's not AI. That's not necessarily AI. Um, I would highly encourage you first to ask yourself what it is about AI and like what it is you think that is a problem with that. Uh, if you're completely against AI, that's fine. But if you're just using it to like, hey, like tell me where I need to put a chapter marker, like that's not, that's just trying to chop it up into even pieces for you. Now, if you don't wanna do that, um, for us, I have a little button that I hit on my computer that just puts a little flag every time I want one. And then I bounce it out as like, a, I just like take all those flags and then put the timestamps. I can't get into technical as like how I actually do this because it's very specific to my workflow. I'm happy to show you, but it's very like, it's weird and I have some weird offhand tools I use. But there are tools you can use to like flag it and you can type it down or you can literally, as you're editing, mm -hmm. pause it, look at the timestamp. Oh, 1357 is where I want my title. 1357, colon. Uh, now we're talking about, uh, like host a well, snack well, case, you know? You have your topics that you know yeah. you already want to record. I was trying to change it up. Um, you just, you know what time, what the timestamp is that you talked about that specific topic. Yeah, so as you're editing though, write your timestamp down, put it as what you want to name the chapter. Literally as you're editing. Um, and that's the best way I know how to do that. I saw a hand in the back, but I have a really bright light in my face. In my, no, okay. Go for it. I could not really hear what the name of the non-AI software you use. So Got I, it. I was asked for a repeat. Yeah, so I, I don't actually use AI software for my chapter titles. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, I don't know, are you a Mac user or a Windows user? Windows. I cannot help you. It's okay. Uh, if you give me a platform, it sure. should be a sister company. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Technology works. Yeah, I, I edit um, with Final Cut Pro, okay. but that's for video. Oh, right. uh, if you're editing audio, a free one is Audacity. Um, I have personally used Audacity before. It's I'm sorry you said I have the Audacity. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I have the Audacity. <laughs> use Audacity. Yeah, it's so Audacity is open source. It's backed by people like you and I who are passionate about this, who know more about coding than you or I, probably. And uh, <laughs> and like they literally created this program for people to use for free. You can download it for free. It's safe. I, I promise I, I don't have insurance on that, like Ty said, so I can't, but no, it's a safe program. I have it on my Mac right now. Um, it's, it's, it's literally audacity, just like what you would think. Um, it's free, it edits audio. And then as you're editing along, just write down as you see the timestamp, because they have like a, every audio editor or video editor has a time bar that shows you where you are. Like it has just a running ticker that shows you where you're at. Wherever you are, just hit the space button, which is gonna be pause on everything imaginable. Right. Uh, and mm -hmm. You can read where that timestamp is, write it down, hit a colon, and then, which is the two dots, not this thing. And, uh, <laughs> that's that stupid. Uh, anyway, uh, hit a colon and then type in whatever you want your, um, your, that chapter title to be, and just keep a running tab. And when you paste that in to either your podcast, like show notes, or YouTube or whatever, uh, it's automatically going to link to that. You don't have to do something fancy. I think the only thing YouTube requires, this isn't required for podcasting, is to do zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, start. Mm -hmm. oh. You have to have the first one be at the very beginning and say start. I don't know why they do that. I think that's what just tells their code that it's like it's time to start doing chapter markers up in here. So, uh, but yeah, it, for just podcasts alone, if you're not doing to YouTube, just write down the timestamp and then put the name and it will Thank automatically you. link them. You do not have to do anything else. I will say, oh, go. I will say also with those timestamps, I also like to use those as headers by bring purposing the script or the uh, podcast into blog posts. Those can be, those can be used see, as the headers. Yeah. Yeah. So all of our um, oh, da, 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 too many things at one time. Uh, yeah. Let's just go to episodes. And then we'll just go to this one because it's the most regent one. Okay, so this right here, as we, I love that face you're making there. Um, as we are uh, going through all of these right here, these bats, mosquitoes, and dollars, strange activity at Sugar Loaf Key, Bat Tower. These are all as we wrote the script. We literally just put them in as chapter markers in advance. So I listen for that cue, and that's how I know to mark it as a chapter. Um, but in opposite, if you're doing it as you edit, write them down and then if you go and like transcribe your episode you can use those and that boosts your seo because you're using them as kind of those break points for people to go back and actually read uh instead of listen if you create blogs out of it which that's a whole other conversation yes. um 
if you have the time for it, do it. If not, don't fight with it. So just keep rolling. Okay. We got more slides. I yes. Know. Okay. So why confidence and conversation matter? Okay. So I know a lot of us hate the sound of our voices. Like we hate listening back to our audio. I get it, but practice, practice, practice. That is how you gain the confidence. Like Cody was saying earlier, um, whatever you're recording your podcast, like go ahead and record it on the camera. Even if you don't like intend on sharing it, like that is how you become a better speaker. And that is how you become a better listener. And so whether it's a guest or the audience, improving your speaking skills creates better conversation. So uh, whenever you are recording, you don't have to fill up space. If you blank, it's okay to just pause. You don't have to say, um, but yeah, like you don't have to fill the space. Like just give yourself time to think of the next thing. Um, and if you stumble, that's okay. Like you can just edit it out whenever you edit it. Um, don't forget to ask for feedback. I think, I believe somebody had talked about that previously. Um, was it you? I think. I, think it was one, I don't know. I, I'm asking for feedback from people listening to your podcast and they will tell you, is your podcast engaging? are people going to care about your podcast? Like, is it, you know, is it educational? Is it empowering? Is it entertaining? Um, and listening, like I said, listening back to your audio makes you become a better speaker and a more active listener. And then that also goes with, um, if you have an interview podcast and that allows you, I think we also talk, uh, somebody also talked about like when you're interrupting people, like in an interview, like not on purpose, but you're like talking about the topic, you know, letting yourself pause and like really think about what they are talking about and really understanding like what what are they talking about um and and why does that matter and it really makes for a better conversation an interviewing tip which like i said this show is not interview but we did three years of interview with the reckless pursuit an interviewing tip that really shook me up because i'm uh i've kissed the blarney stone if you will literally and uh one of the things that really kind of shook me is like as an interviewer listen to listen don't listen to react so when you're hearing someone talk take in focus on what they're saying and try to not already be thinking of how you're going to respond and it's really hard it's really difficult but if you can do that it paces you out to have a more authentic conversation versus just let me push what I want to talk about on whoever you're interviewing. And it opens up a, a very natural dialogue and takes you to places you would have never been able to go before when all you had was your agenda. I cannot stand listening to a podcast where someone goes, but this is how you really feel about that, right? Mm -hmm. I will turn it off that quick <laughs> because they don't care. And I, I'm sorry, and I've done it. I say that because I've listened to myself do it and I was like, I never want to do that again. Mm -hmm. I do not want to be that because that instantly says, I am trying to tell you what I want you to say because you're on my platform and I want you to validate what I feel. So taking that step back and saying, <clears throat> not saying, taking that step back and listening before you react it's probably one of the hardest things I have had to and still learn like in conversation because your natural reaction is you get excited. I mean, we get excited about things. We want to talk about things. We want to interrupt. And some of that by, is by nature. That's human nature. We're going to make mistakes or sometimes it can add. But generally speaking, uh, listen and then respond. Don't listen to react. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the other thing you said right there at the beginning I wanted to touch on? Um, gaining confidence. Improving oh, speaking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Confidence. Uh, if you have an issue listening to yourself, throw everything we are talking about out the window. Don't edit a thing and hit publish about 15 times. <laughs> You'll get over it real fast. <laughs> Especially if you make yourself go back and listen to it again after all that and listen to how you improve. Mm -hmm. Just the confidence of being behind a mic. You know, the first time I got up behind a mic, I wasn't confident. I was scared out of my mind. I was, I used to do, uh, I was in like a Christian rock band or something, like we were terrible. And like, I had this, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, more like striped out. And so we, you know, I remember like going to get up on the stage. It was like, you know, it was a hundred people or something, but they were like, a lot of them were our friends and stuff from school and in church and all that. And man, I couldn't eat all day. I wanted to throw up. I was so 
scared. You know, it terrified me. And then later on, I got so comfortable playing music in front of people. The first time I had to get up and speak without a guitar, I was terrified. And then the first time that I got behind a microphone and recorded myself to try to like put something out there and listen to myself back, I'm like, man, I sound way more hick than I realized. Oh my gosh. Like I thought I was civilized. <laughs> All I know how to, yeah, huh. Yeah, and so, and then now being 100% vulnerable, I'm scared to death to put out music that I sing on. I can sing in person, it doesn't bother me at all. I record it and it freaks me out. It's a growing process all the time. And so I told her, I'm like, hold me accountable. Next year, one song a week. I don't care how bad it sounds, I'm just gonna start putting it out there. Because whenever I was started to become, like, so I do compositional work. Like I said, any of the songs you hear on our shows, my own compositions. When I started doing that, I was scared to death to put out my playing and my compositional work until I wrote one song every day for 30 days straight and forced myself to put it out at midnight. And I got over it. So if you have a hard time listening to yourself, put it out there and walk away. Put it out there and walk away. Say, this is my cutoff point, walk away. Are we out of time? No, you're good. Okay, cool. Keep going. Okay, so why CTA, which is call to action, and strategy matter. So a strong CTA leads your listener to be more engaged with the podcast and shows them how to get more involved with you, your community, and how to stay more connected. So you started your podcast with a goal in mind. Your strategy is what helps you achieve those goals. So create a strategy that focuses on usability and enjoyability from a listener stance. Why do people listen to your show? What do they gain from it? People wanna know what's in it for them. Create your show with your audience in mind. Also, if you want to save time, streamline your process, whether it's a new episode or repurpose content, have those systems and automations in place so you're not having to recreate the wheel every episode. It's like it, for my show notes, like I know exactly like how I want to have the layout. So I have, you know, the three pair introduction paragraphs, then I have the topics discussed, then I have the links. But I literally copy and paste that, you know, for like client podcasts, I copy and paste that format every time. So I'm not having to retype in everything. I change out the topics, I change out the links and everything, but that is my system. Cody has his own systems and automations to streamline his audio editing process and yes. video. One of those, there's tools that can cut silence automatically. Yeah. You know, Logic has one built in automatically. I think Audacity has silence. It's called Silence Stripper. Um, don't take that weird, that's the name of it. Uh, it it's literally like what it's called. Uh, anyway, so it literally goes in and cuts, like you said, a threshold. Like if there's more than 0.5 seconds of silence, I wanted to cut that out until someone talks again. And you set a threshold like of like if it's up, you know, that way if you're like kind of a soft speaker, you can set it to where it doesn't cut off, like cut your words off and stuff. I use that for video, I use it for audio because I mean, there's so much dead air. A lot of times, we, like a lot of our time is spent cutting out dead air to keep things engaging a lot of times. Uh, so automations are a really big deal, whatever you can do to kind of get in the flow with that. Uh, I wanna talk about call to actions. Call to actions aren't at the end of your show only. Call to actions are all the time. You always have call to actions. Has anyone ever heard of, uh, you know, trying to set up a good hook? No one know what that means? It means that thing that grabs that attention right off the bat. I'm happy to show you one of our episodes. I don't know what that looks like time-wise of how we introduce. It's literally a little snippet. We're telling you what we're gonna tell you. It's, this is what's, yes. Oh, sweet. Okay, great, thanks. <laughs> woo woo, yeah. Uh, Can I ask you how long do you recommend an intro? Because I think that's my struggle. Like, I do YouTube, but that's where I feel like I get caught up because I'm like, oh, damn, I'm so mm -hmm. Yep. So uh, So sometimes, so, so uh, for interview uh, styles, I do a lot of cold opens. If you don't know what that is, it's where you take a really good clip of something, put it at the very beginning. Like, man, that's a great one-liner that that person just said. Stick it at the beginning. Before your intro music. Before your intro or like have your intro music kind of fade into it, whatever you feel comfortable doing. To get people's attention to say, this is something I'm gonna get out of this. If they had that to say, what else they got to say, you know? For people that are doing more narrative style, I'll just play one of ours real quick and you can kind of see what we do because they don't take very long at all. Uh, I'll pull, well, let's just go to, what was my last one? I should know this. I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that one. Indrid cool. Indrid. We'll do Indrid. Everyone loves alien dudes. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what our intros are like. As he pulled his truck back onto the highway, he saw it approaching fast from behind. But as the vehicle literally flew by him and swung sideways to block the road, he was forced to throw on his brakes and come to a complete stop. 
Then, as the door swung open, his breath caught in his chest and his heart pounded. That's when the silhouette appeared in the doorway and began walking directly towards him, grinning from ear to ear. But before we begin, if you love cryptids and want to learn the full story, both the legends and the facts There's the delivered hook. as a narrative story, then this guided tour is for you. Skid on over and tap that subscribe, like, or review button, depending on where you watch or listen. Now, climb aboard, open your mind, and get ready. The tour is about to start. I'm Tony, and you're touring cryptids across 54 the seconds. You know? And then it rolls into our intro. So the reason we keep it tight is it's that engaging thing. If you're going there to learn about something spooky, you know, that's going to get your attention because I'm giving you the, the groundwork of what the story's going into. Uh, and then there's that call to action. Hey, if this is your kind of content, go ahead and follow along. Go ahead. We do it at the end, too. Mm -hmm. But why wait till the end? Why wait till someone finishes? Get them right then. Don't wait. You know, throw those call to actions anytime and every time. Uh, to answer your question, uh, sometimes that can be longer. Elaine has a tendency to write slightly longer. That's not a problem. I'm not dog. Like, nope. that is not a bad thing That's at all. <laughs> um, it's whatever you need to say to capture that little bit to get the attention. If mm -hmm. it's a minute, if it's two minutes, it doesn't need to be five. Mm -hmm. right. It needs to be tight enough. Think of it as if you were sharing this on sh social media, would it fit in a minute and 30 seconds and capture someone's attention? You know? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if, it, if it's not shareable on social media, it's probably too long. If people are going to tune out on social, it's probably too long. You want to keep going? We got, yeah, that was, that was the end of that? Main, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about social media real quick. Uh, who in here utilizes social media for their podcast? Great. Uh, has anyone seen success with that? Maybe kind of, sort of? Okay, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I'm going to open this up. I love short form video. Uh, like I said, a lot of our followership came from short form video. Mm -hmm. um, the last short form video that I posted on YouTube alone just the other day, oh, what was the last one? We've shared two in the last 48 hours. One had 528 views. The other one had 9.3 thousand views. We gained about 60 followers just from that one video, right? So, and those are people that are going to start probably watching our long video because YouTube's going to start recommending that because they're starting to try to cross pollinate more. So short form video posting, those kind of things are very powerful. You don't have to go as crazy as we do. That's our strategy because we're a very media like produced show. Um, what questions do people have about social media? I don't want to just ramble on it. I want to answer people's questions about it. What is like, is it automation? I don't know. Man. We want to put up like reels and stuff or yeah. Instagram and maybe TikTok too. So of just like the best clips like from each episode. Yep. Um, are there, any, and again, we're going to script anything. So yep. it's like yeah. we have to figure it out maybe after the fact or while we're recording <laughs> even, which is can be difficult and time consuming. Mm -hmm. What tips or tools do y'all recommend to do that in a very efficient way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I'm editing video specifically, you can do the same thing if you're doing audiograms. If I hear something that's engaging to me, I go ahead and put a chapter marker on it or some kind of marker. Like sometimes you can do markers versus chapter headers depending on what video editing software you're using, or you can even write down the timestamp, or you can go ahead and cut it, and it may be two and a half minutes or whatever, don't worry about editing it, copy it, post it into a different uh, project. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and paste it into a project as you're editing. So you, if you know you're gonna try to do so, four social clips, I'll just show you. <clears throat> so my workflow looks a lot like this. Bounce, 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 do, 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 do. And there's also short form video, and then there's like audiograms. I believe Karen talked about that, where you have a sound bite, and you can put like a picture of them, or like you can have uh, like closed captions even. Um, but either way, like on if you're doing it on Instagram, like collaborating with if it's a guest podcast, uh, if you collaborate with that person, uh, it reaches both audiences at the same time. So you can have a wider reach with that and that works with photos, audiograms, and short form video. I'm gonna forewarn you, this is not going to show you like actual editing stuff here because I have all this normally on an external hard drive. So it's not linked to proper files when I click on this. Um, so it's gonna have a bunch of red missing file stuff. So this is my main workflow for that episode that you just saw of Elaine, where she had the, the skunk ape thing crawling across the screen. Like I said, everything's missing right now file wise. As I'm going through, you'll actually see little cut marks. This is after I've already bounced this out. I'll just cut that, I'll copy it, 
and I will paste it into a clip like that right there. And then that lets me know that's what I'm gonna edit later. So I can just put it out of my head. I don't have to try to worry about coming back to it later. I cut it right then and there and move it aside. Copy it out right then and there, move it aside. You'll notice I have all of these done that way. So that's what I find to do easiest. Now, I love that photo. That's such a good photo. <laughs> yes. That's AI, by the way. Yes. There was not actually a Bigfoot attacking an elderly woman, in case anyone was fearful. <laughs> Sorry. How did you prompt that? You just go, elderly woman, Bigfoot? Yes. <laughs> I literally said, elderly woman uh, being stalked by a Bigfoot that, with red eyes. <laughs> Which it kind of looks like they're, yeah, like I think she just like, met, is that you, Kevin? You're back from the grave. Like, <laughs> she needs glasses really bad, y'all. We have a it's, lot of fun with this show, if you can't tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, uh, okay, anyway. How, how many short form clips do you do between, like, for each episode? Uh, three to six. You know, three to six. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, so here's another fun thing that I've just started implementing uh, go the opposite way. Try something on social media and then see if it works out to create it and make podcast episodes about it. Mm -hmm. Test the waters on social first. So what did I just get to? Where am I at here? Here's our show. Yeah. So I have this new series that I'm doing called uh, Animals That Used to Be Cryptids. These are short episodes. They're like four minutes. I just talk about animals that have been discovered that used to be undiscovered, right? Uh, I did this. This is a whole series that I've already done 16 episodes on as short form videos. They have garnered anywhere from 10,000 to a million views. Um, they do very well. So I adapted them into podcast episodes. And I just slow down my pace and I just enjoy it a little bit more. And I create actual longer content out of them. You don't have to do this with video. You can poll your audience. Hey, mm -hmm. what's it, you know, if you're doing a, a podcast about you know, sports, hey, what's everyone's favorite sports highlights this week? Oh, look at that, content. Now I know what to talk about. This is search relevant, right? People are interested in this. You get 13 people saying that they're really into how the travelers are in the playoffs. Hey, we're in the playoffs, by the way. You aren't some travelers in the playoffs? Come find us at the corndog stand. Uh, so, you know, you, uh, you get a lot of people talking about that. Maybe that's a good thing to do a podcast on if you're talking about Arkansas sports, you know? Uh, poll your audience. Yes. I've tried a lot of different types of videos. Some of them don't get any views at all. So I'm not going to create podcast episodes out of that. But the ones that do, maybe that's something worth exploring. The other thing is don't be afraid to change it up. Yes. You know, we have this other series we're working on right now, which I don't think I have it linked right here because we only have one. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's we started doing like in-field investigation stuff. And, uh, you know, it it has done better than anything else we have posted thus far. And, uh, I mean, People it's literally... People will tell you what they like to see and what they like to hear. Like, your audience or even your new audi potential audience will tell you if it's engaging, if it's a topic that they want to hear more about. Like, they will let you know. Yeah, so this video's been out for not very long, what, four weeks now, and it's had about 6,000 views, which is pretty decent on you. Like, it's not bad, you know? Like, I'm not sitting here saying we're, like, the biggest channel in the world or anything, but it's done really well for our stuff within the first month, right? So, uh, hey, there's another cool use for AI is you can create graphic designs and then animate it a little bit if you don't know how to use stuff like that, just saying. Um, anyway, does anyone else have any questions about short form video or social media? Or any podcasting. other podcasting, <laughs> like what else? Because we're gonna get into monetizing now. Quick question, how many, um, how many posts do you make a week on social media on average for your Four to six? Yeah. Four to six videos, specifically. Um, that's not necessarily what we recommend for everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of our clients, we yeah, do I was four. Say we have um, one of our clients. We have a graphic image and two videos, so it's just three. Yeah. But they also have other stuff that we post too, so it's not just podcast specific. But yeah, I would say four to six, three to five, um, and just do what you can. Like even if you didn't record the video, you can do a quick video of like, hey, I just did this video with so and so. Check it out. Like that's super easy, like low effort video that you could post. Uh, go for it. Just quick uh, social media question. So for influencers, um, do you recommend separate pages? From what? For podcasts and the personality for influencers like people mm -hmm. that already have strong followings what do you consider a strong following um, 100k is your podcast talking about similar things say for instance the is podcast it, hasn't even released yet you're getting ready for starting okay so say like you are oh I don't know 
does it, did anyone like, okay, I'm going to talk to a young audience here. Just forgive me for a second. Uh, TikTok during the pandemic, Casey Hamilton. Anyone know who he was? Like, jolly dude with a big red beard. Anyway, he was a school teacher. Everyone fell in love with his stuff because he uh, didn't want to be a school teacher anymore in the pandemic. And he started doing quirky dances. And he kind of rose to fame really quick on that. He started a podcast. He talked about it on his main page because his brand was him. Mm-hmm. His brand is his personality. So his podcast was just his personality, right? Uh, if your podcast is specific to a topic that maybe you don't want like on an influencer page, like maybe like you're an influencer and you talk about like tech gear, but your podcast is more like film buff stuff, right? Like not as much how to like use the tech or unboxings. It's more like I want to talk about film. Mm-hmm. You may want to separate that and just like shout it out or like kind of collab with yourself, you yeah. know? That kind of thing? I will say one of our clients is a recovery center. And so we've played around with having separate pages, but their podcast is about recovery. And they've gotten a lot more engagement by condensing it down to one page. Yeah. For us, for example, I have my own Instagram that I do like fashion posts. I'm not really talking about cryptids on my page. I will on my stories. That's fine. Yeah. But that's two separate pieces of content. So we have a separate page and it has a lot more engagement that way. So it really just depends on is the influencer, like like you were saying, is it something that they're already talking about or is it a complete separate idea? Sure, I have a music, I guess some would call it an influencer page where I get sponsorships to like feature instruments and stuff like that. And uh, I don't really talk about cryptids a whole lot on that, mm-hmm. like where they're pretty separate. Except for if you hear in our episodes, it'll say at the end, music by Braille Atlas. That's just my moniker for music. It's like a callback. So they kind of touch on each other, but they're separate. Like I don't post my music stuff on cryptids. I don't post cryptids on my music stuff unless it's like a story or something like that. Just play around with it too. Like I've seen both. 